Okay, so um, moving on to module uh, 12, the last module. Um, we did an example from the central limit theorem in the previous video because it relates to the normal distribution, so it was just easier to do an example there. Um, let's move on to calculating probabilities using the normal approximation to the binomial distribution. Okay, so um, in, in that case, you have a problem that you really could solve with a binomial distribution, but uh, you know we're going to use the the normal approximation because you know you, sometimes with really large numbers, actually your calculator um, will not be able to calculate it, right? So that's why we have the normal approximation, which um, you know when you have really large sample sizes is able to quickly give you an answer, you know, without running into calculation problems. Okay, so that's why we have that. So, um, let's go ahead and read through this problem. Um, the probability that a book is returned late to the library is 0.15. So, either you turn a book late, you turn in a book late or not, right? So that's a binomial, you're seeing it starting to come up. Um, during the month of September, 500 books are returned. So that's the set number, your, your, your set number of trials. You have 500 opportunities to be late. Um, and we want to find the probability that at least 60 are late. So you see these large numbers. Uh, if you were to do 500, choose 60 in your calculator, uh, you'd have problems. And since we want it to be at least 60, we then would need, you know, so 60 or more, right? So you need to, it would require too many calculations uh, in order to be able to do on a test, right? So that's why we don't use the normal approximation. We, or sorry, we don't use the binomial distribution. Rather, we use the normal approximation, which is something that we can do on a test, right? So solving this using the binomial would be near to impossible on an exam without a, without a ca um, computer, right? Okay, so um, on any question that I want you to use the normal approximation to the binomial distribution, on the exam, you shouldn't use it unless I specifically say use it, okay? So I will very clearly spell out that you need to use this approximation, okay? All right, so what are we trying to do? Well, let's go ahead and define, some, define what x is. So x is going to be the uh, number of uh, late books um, out of 500, okay? So that's, that's our binomial random variable x, right? Okay, um, since it's a binomial distribution, I guess let's also talk about what are n and p. Remember, n is the number of trials in a binomial distribution. So we have 500 trials. p is the probability of a success. In this case, um, since x is defined as being late, then p will also be the probability of being late. Okay. Uh, remember in binomial we also have q, which is 1 minus p, so that's 1 minus 0.15, which is 0.85. Alright, so actually let me just save some board space and write that down here. Okay. Um, so what are we trying to do? We're trying to find the probability, we're trying to find the probability that at least 60 are late, right, which means 60 or more, right? X is greater than or equal to 60. Right? And technically X is discrete, so you could find the probability X equals 60, add the probability X equals 61, add the probability X equals 62, and you go all the way to 500, take you forever, you're not going to do that, right? So we're using the normal approximation. So uh, let me go ahead, since I'm using the normal approximation, remember normal distributions have mu and sigma, right? So I need to find what is the mean of x and what is the variant or standard deviation of x. So mean is n times p. So the expected number of late books will be 500 times 0.15, which is point, which is 75. Okay. Uh, standard deviation is the square root of n times p times q. So square root of 500 times 0.15 times 0.85, which is 7.9844. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and erase this so I have more room on my board. So here, actually, I'll erase the whole thing. Actually, I 
can just erase that. That's good. Okay. So we're trying to find, let me draw a normal distribution. In the center is our mean, which is 75. We're trying to find the probability x is greater than or equal to 60. Right? So at least 60. Yeah. So we're trying to find the probability that x is greater than or equal to 60. All right. So x, remember, is still x when I write it like this, I'm still thinking of it as discrete. I need to do, don't forget about the continuity correction. This is the biggest mistake we make when we're doing the uh, normal approximation to the binomial distribution. We need to basically uh, account for the fact that the probability x equals, there's 60 and then there's 59 and then there is 61, right? And I need to account for the fact that I want to include 60, um, but I, you know, this is a continuous scale and no longer a discrete scale. Scale. So if I want to include 60, then I need to go a little bit beyond 60. So I'll go to 59.5, right? So I go a little beyond uh, to include 60. So you, you always go a little beyond what you want when you have the equal sign. Right, so if I want 60, I go a little bit beyond and get a little more probability, okay? So if it was the other way around, I would have gone up, right? So you always go to get a little more probability, okay? So that's the continuity correction. So this is equal to the probability that x is greater than 59.5. Does it matter if it's 0.5 versus 0.9 versus whatever? Did you you always, up? no, so you always go between whatever your, um, in this case, so it was a binomial, so it's, you're always counting 0, 1, 2, 3. So you want to go bet between those two numbers, so it's always going to be 0.5. I'm going between wow. 59 and 60 because I want to include 60. So there's all these numbers between 59 and 60 that the binomial doesn't take into consideration but the normal does, right? So binomial is always discrete? Binomial is discrete, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so then from there, I just need to, uh, you know, find this probability x is now normal, okay? So, um, you know, I need to convert it from a distribution of x into the distribution of z. So I use this conversion, x minus mu divided by sigma, right? So this is going to be equal to, I'm converting now 59.5. So this would be 59.5 minus 75, that's mu. Sigma is 7.9844. You should round sigma to at least four decimal places because uh, you, know, you, want, you want to make your, your conversion as exact as possible. And uh, we know on our, on our table we need at least two decimal places. So you should round that to at least four. Okay, so, or if you're using your calculator, you can actually just not round at all. That'd be a great. That'd even be better, right? Okay, so um, go ahead and plug that into your calculator, and you should get, um, let's see, negative one point nine four. Okay. Now, if I look up in my table, negative one point nine four. Remember, that's giving me the area behind. So if I want the area in front, then I'll have to do 1 minus whatever I get in my table. So um, negative 1.94.0262. When you subtract that, you get 0.9739. Okay? All right. Um, so that was finding the probability that x is at least 60. Let me change up the question just slightly just so we can talk about that continuity correction a little bit more because that tends to be the difficult thing to think about here. So now what if I wanted to say was a probability um, let me let me see that let's see find the probability um, less than 
65 are late. Okay, so doing it in the other direction, less than 65. So let's see, how would I answer that? Probability of x is less than 65. In the center, still have that 75, right? Mu is still equal to 75. Sigma is equal to 7.9844. All right, so 65 is here. So, remember, so there's like a basically like a bar you can think of around that 65. Actually, sometimes drawing that out as a bar can be really helpful. So down here is a. 64, up here is 66, right? And I want to find the probability x is less than 65. So that would be down this way, right? So, but for my continuity correction, remember I said you always kind of, oh, actually, you know what? It's not less than or equal to. So I included this bar, right? 60, uh, 65 bar. I First thing I need to do is change it to an equal to so that I'm able to include the bar like that. So, how could I, if x is discrete, how can I rewrite that with an equal sign? Less than 65, if x is discrete, it's the same thing as less than or equal to 64, right? That's an important first step, right? Don't forget to do that. So, as your, so my bar should really be around 64. So, less than 64 less than or equal to 64. Okay, so when I when I do equal to 64, you see that bar, it only covers half of it, right? So that's why I need to extend it a little bit further in this direction. So what would that be? 64.5, right? That's my continuity correction. 64.5, so that's my continuity correction. All right, um, so when you do that, you should get z less than negative 1.32. That's using, okay, go ahead and calculate um, z using, you know, x minus mu divided by sigma, okay? And if you look at the table, 0.934. All right. All right, um, also in the final exam, you might have some questions uh, relating to the chi-square table, the student's t-table, and the f-table. Most of the, these type of questions will be ensuring that you know how to read those tables, okay? Um, so, you know, similar to the type of questions that you saw in your homework where it's basically just checking that you know how to read those tables. Uh, be careful, the t-table is not a um, cumulative distribution table because it gives the area in the front instead of giving the area in the back. So just be careful, it's a little different in that sense. Uh, same thing um, with the uh, chi, chi square table. So just be careful of that. And there, there are pictures on the tables to try to remind you of that. So there's this one, and you can see that there too. So um, make sure you know how to read numerator and denominator degrees of freedom, and you're prepared to you know, calculate some simple probabilities using these tables. All right, uh, if you have any questions, please uh, post it to the discussion board, um, the Q&A discussion board. I'll be monitoring those as you're preparing for your final, and I look forward to that discussion there.